Hey everybody, John here from the Crafting Brothers. Uh, over the holidays, I was given this really nice Instapot or Crock-Pot, and it's a pressure cooker, I guess, too. And uh, it's been sitting on the shelf for a couple of months, so I just opened the box now. And I found something in here that I thought was very interesting. So you tell me what you think. I pulled this out and I started doing this. Hmm. I'm definitely gonna build something out of this. Can you see it? I can. So I usually, you know, whenever I pull out packaging out of boxes, I end up throwing it away. It's just, they're nothing special, but this thing just has such a cool design to it. I know this is gonna become something. I even pulled off one of my little wizard's huts from my one of my other builds and I put it right in the middle there and it already started my brain going. So this is definitely gonna become something. So let's get right to it and see what I can make out of this crock pot package. So I'm gonna start this build by finding some 3D printed items that I think will work well on this piece here. And this particular piece is a castle turret. And these will serve as lookout towers on all four sides of the platform. Next, I found this really cool file called a tangled tower. And it actually looks like a wizard's tower once it's all assembled, it's in about five pieces. But this is gonna look really cool on this piece. I'm going to do the usual prep here, which starts with a coat of Mod Podge and black paint. Then we're going to do a pewter gray and light brushing of granite gray and then a wash. Meanwhile, all of my 3D printed pieces are going to get a coat of flat gray. Okay, here's where I'm at so far, and I think these pieces are going to work really well on this platform. So now that I've got them spray painted, I'm going to continue with my painting. Again, the color scheme here is gonna start with a dry brushing of granite gray, and then we're gonna move on to a few other colors before the wash is applied. I'm using a raw sienna and sand color, which will actually give the granite surface a bit more depth. And once the wash is applied, this will be toned down quite a bit. I decided to add some of my green wash here, which I think will add some depth and make the rock surface look as though there's moss growing on it. Next, I'm using the same two colors, raw sienna and sand, to prep the castle turret towers. The main section of the tangled tower has a different structure to it, so I'm going to use a sand color here to look like plaster, and then there's going to be some stonework that I need to paint next. I'm going to skip most of the paint work here and just show you a few little areas that I painted because this was rather tedious and I don't think it's fun to watch. Next, all of my 3D printed pieces are going to get a dry brushing of granite gray and then we'll apply a wash after that. The tower section has a different color scheme, so I'm going to be dry brushing it with a tan color.
Next, I'm gonna turn my attention back to the platform where I'm gonna build wood bridges from the center out to the pillars where the sentry towers are gonna to go. I'm using toothpicks here, which I think is the correct scale for the job. Next I'm going to build a staircase using foam pieces, so I'm going to cut those out first. Then I'm going to make a homemade sculpta mold out of one ply toilet paper, water, and plaster of Paris. After adding the water, I'm going to use my cordless drill to mash up the water with the toilet paper. After the staircase is dry, I now need to match up the paint job with the rest of the piece, so I'll do my best to accomplish that. After painting all of the bridge sections with a golden brown, uh, the best way i found is to put a burnt umber acrylic ink over that to give it that really good wood look. Now it's time to flock the entire piece using PVA glue, which is watered down, brown tile grout, and I'm going to use several different types of green flocking as well. So I needed some armature trees for my platform here and I had two that I have made before, uh, but I do need to make a third. So I'm going to show you how I make these cool little trees out of wire. And this is a 10 gauge copper wire that has about 16 strands in there and that's what we're gonna use to make the tree armature. So the way this works after twisting the bottom portion of the wire to form the trunk, you then need to separate the wire into sections of three or four wires. Then, using pliers, I need to twist each section, which will form the branches. The next step is to divide the wires again and twist those to create more branches. After that, the technique is to create a loop at the end of each wire, making sure to leave some overlap. These wires will form the individual branches of the tree. The final step here is to cut the loops and then bend those upward. And we're almost done with this armature tree.
I'm applying a layer of liquid latex to the branches here because the wires are twisted and you can see that. So by applying this latex, it actually thickens the branches and gets rid of that. After the liquid latex is dry, I'm using PVA glue here to dip my tree into the flocking. And this is the end of the process. You just need to make sure you have enough foliage on top of the tree. I've also used my hot glue gun to thicken the trunk of the tree. And this project is finally done. And I have to say for a piece of packing material, this thing turned out really cool. I knew I could make something out of this. So thanks for watching everybody. Please send me your comments and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week with another build or challenge.